Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Pity Beats here from Pop Turnit is speaking to Ty Doran about season four of Manifest on Netflix. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for being here. Oh my God. Thank you for having me. Super excited. I'm excited to chat with you. Let's not waste any time. Can we give a shout out to the Manifest fans very quickly? Absolutely. I Always. mean, Certainly. incredible yeah. fan base. Uh huh. My God. I mean, it was like this, it, the show would no longer exist. If it were not <laughs> Literally, born. that's uh, I mean. so. Yes, they they deserve all the credit in the world for sure. When does it start kind of hitting you that a new series is coming out? A lot of people usually say, "Well, you do the press drunk, like you and Luna did the press drunk and everything." You're talking to all these outlets, and they're like, "Yeah, like it's coming out." But like, is it even like a month or two like before that that it starts to kind of sink in? Like, wow, like very soon people are gonna see what we worked on. Uh, yeah. Well, honestly, I don't even know if it's hit me yet. I, I it blows <laughs> my mind that anyone in my mind we were just doing this for fun, just a group of kids being silly together in a room. Um. I uh, I think leading up to it, I was I was just excited, you know. I, I didn't really know. I I I was excited to see it. I I I watched all of it very shortly before it came out on Netflix and was like, whoa, okay, there it is. It's manifest. <laughs> like it, it is more of the show that that people love, and 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 that is. Uh, I think that's great. I was I was I was not worried ever because I figured, you know, the people who it's really for are those those same fans that like got it to come back and wanted more and and it is clear like everyone had brought their really I, what i was worried about was me ruin the whole dynamic like and, and, oh god <laughs> the introduction of this random kid gonna like uh ruin the whole show i'd i don't i'd like to think it did not well <laughs> but like i feel like that's always gonna be a overwhelming experience right because it's almost like you're the new kid on the block so to speak right so is it like how much did you like know when you were cast for cal like like that was like how much did you know like were you giving because sometimes i have some friends that are creatives as well you're not told much sometimes you're told like a little bit like were you given a little bit of meat and potatoes or so i I, like uh, at the beginning, when I was just first auditioning, I had no, I didn't even know what show it was for, or what character, the sides had all the names changed. They were like theoretical scenes for future seasons. It was like- You're like, no, what is no this? Way. I know, I know. It's ba- it's very hush-hush. And that is like, even when I, I was uh, on the show, working there, like everything was kept pretty quiet. Like yeah. we didn't know how the show was going to end until, uh, you know- a week or two before we started shooting the finale mm-hmm. and uh and that that was fun you know like yeah. we, we got the the episodes dropping in my mailbox was a lot very similar to the episodes dropping on netflix and so that was exciting in the audition process i i really had no idea it was only slowly as i i went through all the rounds and, and readings and working and meeting jeff and romeo and working with Julie, the brilliant casting director on Manifest, uh, that I got more of the information and what the plan was. And at that time, the people, you know, the cast and and crew working on the show had absolutely no idea that I existed, was coming, what was going to happen. Who is this guy? Like, what is happening right now? (laughs) Well, yeah, exactly. They're, everyone was very confused. Um, and then well, they had obviously read it by the time that I got there. Uh, <laughs> I hope. And then, uh, like, got a little more clarification. I knew that, uh, you know, I was taking over this character. I watched all of Manifest after that. We, like, really boned up on uh, on the story and, you know, became the biggest fan of Jack Messina in the world, just picking apart his, his process and, and the work he had done with the character already. Um, and then I didn't know where it was going to go from there. I didn't know if he was going to age another five years and be some other guy. Like I, I, we didn't know. And then yeah. uh, came back and as things started getting written and, and finalized, there it all was. Do you know, so when you start kind of, cause at one point there is like a situation where like, you know, what's going on. Right. Cause you're like, yeah. filming. <laughs> 
<laughs> eventually. Well, yeah, it depends. Some of us do. The yeah, smart ones. But like, you know, <laughs> like you, you, you have enough scripts, like, you know, what's yeah. going on enough. Let's just say, <laughs> but like, are you conscious of the fact that like the audience member for manifest has to be like a detective and like active, like watching it. Like, I feel like that's the pretty cool thing about it. Like you're on a show where like, you need like audience participation with like, what is going on? Why did this happen? Who is this person? Like, it's cool to think about that, right? Being on a show where the audience is a detective. Absolutely. Um, I, I think it, it really mirrors like, you know, the work we do as actors in piecing apart, you know, all of the subtext and everything that's going on in this, trying to break it down into yeah. what the, the author, Jeff, in this case, intended, um, and the whole writer's room, obviously, yep. it's a team effort. Um, and so uh, that's really interesting. And then uh, on the, on a, another side, it, it's like, it's fascinating to learn the information as you make the show right because yep. i am trying to figure out oh what is he thinking or want ultimately out of whatever's going on and how am i gonna kind of throw that on the screen from the page right like exactly. that's always the exactly. coolest thing too and and trying to to leave those those breadcrumbs and st sometimes you don't even know that they are you know what i mean like you think you're just doing one rant you're like why am i in this weird scene with no dialogue where i'm throwing away something that's yellow and then it turns out that yellow thing was the key to every you know what i mean like it just uh it, it's it's exciting and uh i i like really something that that the the creative team on the show is so good at is, is stringing the like giving you enough story to keep you hooked keep you engaged but not too much where you're like, ah, I know what's going to happen. Like, oh, yeah. I know what's going on. It is, they are masters of, of tension and keeping you on the edge of your seat. So it makes it a lot of You and Luna have some really amazing stuff together in season four. And I just kind of want to know, but I, I know I, you've done interviews and I've seen you talk about how you love working with each other and everything. But I have a question specific that's more kind of specific. What yeah. are those conversations like with her? Like, before like doing a scene and everything because those are the it's like the game day right like what are the luna blaze ty Dor doran game day conversations of like okay we're going we're doing our thing like what's that like uh -huh. the pre chats well, some, i mean sometimes it's it's hyping each other up you know <laughs> what what we're struggling with in game the day. scene <laughs> front of lines, trying to like nail down what the beats are and like what, what you know where the cameras are going to be and what we actually need to be doing with our blocking stuff like that. But honestly, most of the time, it's just like, uh, I, I think, um, what, what served us well in terms of, uh, playing brother and sister was just how well we got on as people and coworkers. And so, uh, like, she is just so great and a pleasure to talk to, um, and has like, the wildest life like all there's always something going on in the life of luna blaze um <laughs> and she's just so interesting and um and so there's a lot to talk about and joke and i think it's it's building an underrated part of of any show especially when you are coming on late in the in the process yeah is trying to build that chemistry with your ensemble you yeah. know what i mean these are people that have spent their entire lives together how do you recreate that not having like really ever spoken as human beings yeah absolutely it's hard and so it, it is it like the the a lot of the actual work there was strictly play with luna and just us getting on chatting you know becoming like uh, had developing a sibling-esque relationship the move to Netflix for Manifest was like massive in like many different elements, right? In one, like it kind of saves the show and like it was nuts, but like the global scale of things just become completely taken to the next level, right? We're like yeah. way more people can watch the show now. Are you starting, because the show like came out November 4th, right? So like, are you starting yeah. to kind of realize like the global effect it's had on like, like it's pretty crazy right like you're probably it, getting I mean, love from yeah. all over the world yes it's it's wild and and i i i can't tell you how cool i think that is i, I am it has really sparked a, like a desire to learn more languages let me tell you because yeah 
people from everywhere come up, talk, to, send me messages in, in all sorts of different languages from all sorts of places. And, and it, it is, it's uh, special to, to create something that connects with like the humanity in people, you know? And yeah. you can tell that by, based on the broad appeal of, of the show that like it speaks to across cultures and experience. It, there's something in it for everyone. And and because it, it's like such a deeply human story, I I think that's uh, I think that's great. I think that's been really really cool. Probably one of the best things about it. You did like some press junkets, and the press junkets are like in and out, right? Because you're like you're saying hi, it's like five minutes. So like, but like, right. do you find like, because even with me, like I, you're walking on eggshells because you don't want to like spoil things and everything. It's been out for a month, but you still don't want to spoil things. Are you getting used to it now though? With like doing interviews, making sure not to say. Sometimes, though, the hosts don't help as well. Like, they'll bring something up where you're like, this answer contains, like, I can only answer this by, like, talking about something that happened. <laughs> right, right. And, and I, I can't tell you how tricky it was, especially, like, we started doing um, press for, for part one, basically yep. right as we were finishing up and, and finished shooting uh, part two. Yep. And, to complete the whole season and uh, parsing in my brain like okay what which one was episode 10 what happened like and also you don't you sometimes don't shoot them in sequence too right that's no, something it's all, I, it's all I, out of order don't, i feel like people don't realize that right yeah i i think it it surprises people because yeah. it's also like you know usually you try to to work uh episode by episode yeah least, um but uh, the complication on our end, especially in part one, was Josh's beard. He, you know, he that was his real beard that he has in the beginning and that he in like diegetically shaves in the show. So we couldn't shoot any of the flashback stuff until after he had already shaved in episode seven. That is whatever. back. That's whatever. beyond. Whatever. That's behind the scenes scoop for you. That is that. So we, then we like we're in February, we're getting close to wrapping up on on part one, which we did in like April or or March or something like that. Um, we're shooting scenes from episode one that like play into that story. Thankfully, they're they're sort of you know they're removed. They're much further back in the past, so that gives you a little separation. But it was it like we the episodes didn't always work in the same order it is all jumbled up in my brain thankfully and this is rarely useful i have a terrible memory and so honestly you could ask me anything about the show i have no idea what happened that was like oh, the no. best case the, I think years ago I the, manifest, you know? <laughs> the greatest thing too is the fact that you don't know like People think you know what's going to happen too, right? Like you right. said, it, like people know they can message you for like, so what's happening with your character? And it's like, so like sometimes, yeah, you don't even know sometimes. You're in the same yeah, boat. Which, <laughs> <laughs> which is no awesome. But yeah, uh, November 4th episodes came out on Netflix season four of Manifest. Ty, so great chatting with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Awesome talking to you, man. I appreciate it. it was um, time. Your Instagram is just your name, Ty Doran. Just my name. There's underscores at the beginning and end. And so beginning. underscore Ty Doran. Awesome. They can check that out. Well, this has been Pop Turnative. YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Till next time, it's Ty Doran with Kyle Stone in Manifest Season 4 on Netflix. And PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Poptternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.